ayah in the book of Allah is ayat of Kursi. Because this ayah comprises ten attributes from the attributes of Allah, the mighty and majestic. And then the Shaykh goes on to explain the ayah. So he said, Allah, the mighty and majestic, says, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. With the explanation, Allah, none has the right to be worshipped except Him. Al-Hayy, the ever-living, Al-Qayyum, the independent sustainer of everything. Shaykh Abdul said, This contains ikhlas tawheed lillah. This contains making tawheed purely and sincerely for Allah, the mighty and majestic. And the meaning of la ilaha illa hu, and the meaning of the first part of the ayah, la ilaha illa hu, is la ma'buda haqqun illa hu. Nothing is worshipped rightfully except him, he the majestic and most high. So all things which are worshipped besides Allah are things which are worshipped without haqq, without right. Meaning, even if they are called aliha even if they are called gods or objects of worship, then they are just names which they, the people, give to them. Allah has sent down no proof for them. Al-Hayyul Qayyum, the continuation of the ayah, Al-Hayyul Qayyum, with the explanation, the ever-living one, the independent sustainer of all, Shaykh Abrithimin said, meaning, the one who is perfect in his hayat, the one who is perfect in his life and in his sustaining everything. In his hayat, his life, and in his qayyumiyya, and, his, and in, his, in his sustaining everything. <clears throat> perfect in that. So he is the one who is hay, he is the al hay, the ever living one, who is perfect and complete. In his life. His life was not preceded by non existence, nor will it be followed by perishing, nor will it be followed by coming to an end. Because he is Al Awwal, he is the first one, such that there was nothing before him. And he is Al Akhir, he is the last one such that there is nothing after him. Allah, the mighty and majestic, said, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Surah Al-Rahman, 55th Surah, Ayahs 26 to 27, with the explanation, everyone upon the earth will pass away, everyone upon the earth will perish. But the majestic and honorable face of your Lord will remain. The Shaykh said, Some of the Salaf said, It is befitting for the person who recites this ayah from Surah Al Rahman, Ayah 26, Kullu man alayha fan, everyone upon the earth will perish. So one of the Salaf said, It is befitting that one who recites this, Kullu man alayha fan, that he does not stop, rather he continues. So that he, I mean, he continues and recites the next ayah along with it, so that he says, "Kullu man alayha fanin wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram." So he reads the two ayahs together. With the explanation, everyone upon the earth will perish, but the face of your Lord, full of majesty and honor, will remain. The Sheikh said, in order to make clear in doing this that the deficiency of the created beings and the perfection of the Creator, the Majestic and Most High. In reciting both these ayahs together, the first ayah showing the deficiency of the whole of creation, the whole of creation will perish, all of it. And the second ayah showing the perfection of the Creator who will remain. So, so as he said, one of the Salaf mentioned, these ayahs should be, should be read together to, ex to stress that point. And as a side point, then Al Hafiz ibn Kathir mentions in his tafsir that this was the saying of Al Sha'abi, Al Sha'abi from the Tabi'in. 
And as Sayyuti mentions in Ad-Durr al-Manthur, he refers it back to be to occurring in the tafsir of, Abdur, of Ibn Abi Hatim. Tafsir of Ibn Abi Hatim. Wallahu a'lam. Then Shaykh al said, So he, the perfect and most high, is Al-Hay, the living one, who is perfect with regard to his life. That is because his life does not have any deficiency in any sense. And the life of other than him, the lives of other than him are all deficient. Look at your life. O oh person, if you, examine your, if you examine your hearing, then your hearing is deficient. You cannot hear everything. Your, see, your seeing is likewise. Your health is likewise. How many ailments afflict the people. And likewise the rest of the means of life, the rest of the means for life. They are deficient. But as for the Lord, the mighty and majestic, then he is the one who is perfect in his life. Al-Qayyum, the meaning of it is, Al-Hayy, they, they have a living one, the one who is perfect with regard to his life. Al-Qayyum, the Shaykh said, its meaning is, Al-Qa'im bi nafsihi, Al-Qa'im ala ghairi. It means the self-sufficient one, who sustains, the one who sustains others meaning the one who exists by himself. He does not have any need of anyone. He the mighty and majestic. Then the Shaykh quotes an ayah. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Surah Ali Imran, the third surah, ayah 97. With the explanation, And whoever disbelieves, then Allah is ghani, Allah is independent, having no need of the whole of creation. In no need of any of the creation. Then he quotes a second ayah in Takfuru fa in Allah Rani yun ankum Wala Yaroda li ibadi hil kufr wa in Tashkuru Yarodala Yarodahulakum. Sota Zumar 39 Surah Ayah 7 with the explanation that if you disbelieve, then Allah has no need of you. And he is not pleased with unbelief for his servants. And if you give thanks, then he is pleased with that for you. Sheikh Bhutimin said, so he is Ghani. He is independent, free of all needs. And there occurs in the Hadith Qudsi that he, the Majestic and Most High, said, Ya ibadi innakum lan tablughu darri that Allah the most the majestic and most high said in the hadith Qudsi, O my servants, you cannot reach being able to harm me, such that you could harm me. And you can you will never reach being able to benefit me, such that you could benefit me. In a footnote they mentioned reported by Muslim. The Shaykh said, So he is the one who exists independently by himself. He has no need of anyone and he sustains everything else. Everyone besides him is sustained by Allah. The mighty and majestic, Allah the Most High said, أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ Surah al raad the 13th Surah, Ayah 33, with the explanation, is the one who maintains every soul and knows what it has earned. To the end of the ayah, the Shaykh said, meaning, is he like one who does not possess anything? He and the one who sustains every soul and knows whatever it has done, he is Allah, the mighty majestic. So therefore the meaning of Al-Qayyum is that it has two meanings. Al-Qayyum, the name of Allah the Most High, has two meanings. And they are Al-Qa'imun bi nafsihi Ya'ni la yahtaju li ahad. The first meaning is that he is a self-subsisting one, I mean the one who exists by himself, that he has no need of anyone. And the second meaning is Al-Qa'imun ala ghayrihi, the one who sustains everything else. Meaning, 
everything has need of Allah, the mighty and majestic. Then the next part of the ayah, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم With the explanation, he is not taken by drowsiness nor by sleep. He is not taken by sinna, drowsiness, nor by noam, by, by sleep. The Sheikh said, A sinna means an nuas, it means drowsiness. And that is the initial stage before sleep. And noam, sleep, that is well known. So Allah, the mighty and majestic, is not taken by drowsiness nor by sleep. So a person is affected by drowsiness and is affected by sleep whether he chooses whether he chooses it or not sometimes a person sleeps whilst he is praying sometimes he is drowsy whilst he is speaking to the people he becomes drowsy he does not he does not have ability over it but the lord the mighty and majestic is not seized by drowsiness nor by sleep because of the perfection of his life, he the perfect and most high. And the perfection of his qayyumiyyah, of his, the perfection of his sustaining everything else. And there occurs in the authentic hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, Inna Allah la yanam wa la yanbaghi lahu an yanam. And he said, Allah does not sleep and it would not be befitting for him that he should sleep in a footnote that the hadith reported by Muslim in the book of Iman Sheikh Bratimin said meaning it is totally impossible that he should sleep he the mighty and majestic because he is perfect in his life perfect in his in his sustaining everything who could sustain and who would sustain the creation if the Creator were to sleep, no one, no one could do so. So He, the Majestic and Most High, is not taken by slumber nor by sleep, and Allah knows best. <clears throat> then the Shaykh continues with the explanation of the ayah. After a few pages, he, he, meant he, he, he gives explanation of the next hadith. Then he continues after a few pages and he says, Then we return to the explanation of Ayat al Kursi. He said, Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. To him, with the explanation, to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is upon the earth. The Shaykh said, This sentence shows the universality of his sovereignty, it shows the generality and the universality of the sovereignty of Allah, the mulk, the sovereignty of Allah. It covers everything. He the mighty and majestic. And that he is alone in al-mulk, in sovereignty. He the perfect and most high. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. With the explanation, to him belongs everything in the heavens and everything upon the earth. And the proof that his mulk, his sovereignty, is, is general to, and covers everything, is that the word ma, in his saying, wa ma fil ard, ma, and he brings a grammar point here, which I'll just quickly mention. He said, ma is ism mausul, yani lahu, lahu ladhi. It means alladhi, whatever, it means whatever is in the heavens and whatever is upon the earth. Because an ism al mausul indicates that the thing is general or universal. And the proof that he is alone in al-mulk, in sovereignty, is that he brought the khabar, the piece of information that normally comes at the end of the sentence. Allah brought that to the start of this sentence. In, meaning, instead of saying whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth, lahu is for him. The lahu is brought to the start of the sentence to show its particular particular to him, mean to him and to him alone is whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the in the earth. So the Shaykh said, so Taqdim putting this the khabar at the start of the sentence shows that it's restricted to him. So no one has sovereignty over anything in the heavens nor upon the earth except Allah. 
in full and total sovereignty. No one has it except Allah. And that which a person owns from clothing and property and the like of that, then his ownership is restricted. His ownership only in the restricted sense. He is not able to act with regard to it however he wishes. So if the person wanted to burn up his clothes, he would be pre prevented. I mean, they're his clothes, but he is not allowed to do the like of that. He would be prevented. So my ownership of something is not totally free. I cannot act with regard to it except in accordance with the legislation. So it's restricted. My, and our ownership of something is restricted. Restricted by the legislation. So therefore it is not permissible for us, for example, to derive usury, riba, from our wealth. Even though the person who gives the riba gives the usury, he might agree and he might be pleased to do so. However, this is not permissible. So we are not totally free with regard to that which we own. We do not have ownership except restricted ownership. But as for total unrestricted sovereignty and ownership, where the owner can do whatever he wishes, then that is the sovereignty of Allah, the mighty and majestic. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. With the meaning, to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is upon the earth. Man dhalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idhni. The part of the ayah with the explanation, who is there? I mean, there is none that can intercede with him except with his permission. Sheikh al said, man here is a question, meaning who. It's in the form of a question, but its meaning is a negation, a denial. I mean, there is no one. There is no one who can intercede with Allah except with the permission of Allah. And intercession, as shafa'a, is well known. And it means mediating for somebody else to bring some benefit or repel some harm. And as is known, the kings of the world, no matter how great their kingship is, a person can come and intercede with them without any any prior permission. Even a very great king, then his wife can intercede with him and she does not have to seek permission from him. However, Allah, the mighty and majestic, no one can intercede with him except with his permission. The noblest one from his servants cannot intercede with him except with the permission of Allah. This is a proof for the completeness of his sovereignty, the completeness of his kingship, he the mighty and majestic. And that from the completeness of his kingship and sovereignty is that no one is able to speak with him, nor to intercede with him, even for, some, even for something good, except with his permission. So who is the most honorable one from the descendants of Adam? Who is the most honorable one from the creation, from the descendants of Adam with Allah? He is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But on the day of resurrection, it will not be possible for him to intercede, except after he has sought permission from Allah. Then he has made a very long prostration. And Allah has inspired him with words of praise, which he did not inspire him with before that. Then he will be able to intercede. And whoever is less than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa then this is even more the case with him. I mean, how can he intercede without permission? No one can intercede except with the permission of Allah. Why? Because of the perfection of his kingship and sovereignty. He, the mighty and majestic. يَعْلَمُ مَا يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ the, eye with the, the part of the eye with the explanation, he knows whatever is in front of them and whatever is behind them. The Shaykh said, meaning, Allah, the mighty and majestic, knows ma bayna aydihim. He knows what is literally in front of their hands. The Shaykh said, meaning, from the affairs of the future. Wa ma khalfahum. And he knows what is literally behind them. The Shaykh said, from the affairs of the past. This is a proof for the perfection of his ilm, perfection of his knowledge. He the mighty and majestic. And that it encompasses everything, past and present and future. So whatever is bayni whatever is in front of you, 
means whatever is in the future, whatever whatever is in your future, even by a, if it be by a mere moment, and whatever is behind you, even if it was just a moment ago. So, for example, the speech that we are saying today after Asr, I mean, the Sheikh used to give these lessons after Asr prayer, so the speech that we are saying after Asr, is it in front of us or is it behind us? It is behind us. The speech we just said is behind us. The words I have just said now, the words I am saying now. As for what I am saying now, then that is, I am just about to say, that is the future. And what is, now, what is now is the present. What came before, that is past. It is behind you. So Allah, the mighty and majestic, He knows whatever is in front of us, from the present and the future, and whatever is behind us. This shows the, perfe the perf perfection of His knowledge. He the mighty, or rather He the majestic and most high. Because the knowledge of others besides Him is deficient. Knowledge of other, anyone else besides him is deficient. Then the Shaykh explained how our knowledge, and knowledge of everyone except Allah, is deficient. From two aspects. Firstly, because we are ignorant of many things, and then our knowledge is newly acquired. And secondly, when we have come to know something, then there is a blemish which affects our knowledge, which is anisyan, forgetfulness. As for the knowledge of Allah, the mighty and majestic, then there is no forgetfulness in it and no ignorance which preceded it. Just as Musa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when Fir'aun said to him, Surah Taha, ayahs 50, the 20th surah, ayahs 51 and 52, with the explanation that Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, said to Musa, then what about the earlier, genera the earlier generations? What about them? So Musa salam, said, knowledge of them is with my Lord in a book. He does not err, he does not make any mistake, nor does he forget. Sheikh Abuthimin said, la yadillu, meaning he does not have ignorance, he is not ignorant. Wala yansa, meaning he does not forget that which, that which happened in the past. The Sheikh said, so our knowledge is surrounded by two factors which afflict, which aff afflict it. Something which precedes it and affects it, which is ignorance. And a matter which follows it, which is forgetfulness. But the knowledge of Allah, the ilm, the knowledge of Allah, the, majest the mighty and majestic, is free of all of that. And he's saying, he the Most High, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِي يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ وَلَا يُحِيْتُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءَ part of the ayah with the explanation there is none who can intercede with him except by his permission he knows whatever is in front of them and whatever is behind them and they do not encompass anything from his knowledge except what he wishes the sheikh said that the creation do not encompass anything from his knowledge except that which he wishes and knowledge here means al ma'loom means that thing which is known meaning we do not encompass anything from that which is known by Allah, except that which Allah wish, except that, that which Allah, the mighty, majestic, wishes. And this is like His saying, "Alimul al ghaybi fala yuzhiru ala ghaybihi ahadan, illa man irtada min rasulin fa innu yasluku min bain yadehi wa min khalfihi rasada." Surah Al Jin, seventy-second surah, ayahs twenty-six and twenty-seven, with the explanation that Allah is the knower of the hidden and unseen. So he does not reveal what he has made unseen to anyone except to a messenger whom he is pleased with. And then he places in front of him and behind him angels who guard it. The Sheikh said, Likewise, we do not encompass anything from knowledge about him. We don't encompass knowledge of those things which Allah knows. Likewise, we do not encompass knowledge about him, himself. 
meaning knowledge of his self and his attributes, except what he wishes. So we do not know that which relates to the, to the self of Allah, his that, or to his names and his attributes, except that which he wishes. So this is why the ulama, the scholars, rahimahumullah, may Allah have mercy upon them, have said that the matter of names and attributes are tawqifiyya. Matter of Allah's names and attributes is a matter where there has to be a text, meaning we must withhold with regard to it, withhold with regard to affirming it or denying it, restricting ourselves to what the legislation mentions. Because we do not know from the attributes of our Lord except what he has taught us. Nor, nor do we know from his names except what he has taught us. Nor about his self except what he has taught us. He, the mighty and majestic. And this sentence contains a proof for the person's great need for the knowledge of Allah, the mighty and majestic. And that it is befitting that the person should ask Allah the Most High to teach him that which he does not know. From that which contains a benefit for his religion and his worldly life. Wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wal ard. Part of the eye with the explanation. His footstool extends over the heavens and the earth. Sheikh Bukhimin said the kursi, the footstool. He said Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah said, it is the place of the two feet of Allah, the mighty and majestic. The kursi, but the ayah is given the name, ayat al-kursi, the ayah of the kursi, the ayah of the footstool. He said, Ibn, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, the kursi is the place of the two feet of Allah, the mighty and majestic. And it is beneath the arsh, beneath the throne. And the throne is greater than it. And there occurs in the hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that he said, the seven heavens compared to the kursi, the footstool, are just like a ring thrown in a desert. And the greatness of the throne, the arsh, over the footstool is like the greatness of that desert over the ring. Hadith reported by Ibn Hibban in his Sahih and others and declared authentic by Shaykh al-Albani, authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani in a sahiha Shaykh al Thimin said, a small ring of chain mail, if you throw it into a desert, I mean a vast land, it will be like nothing. This is the seven heavens and the uh, seven earth, this is the seven heavens and earths compared to the footstool, just like a ring compared to a desert. And the greatness of the throne, the arsh over the kursi, the footstool, is just like the greatness of the desert over that ring. So the throne is much greater than the footstool, the kursi. And the creator of the throne, the arsh, the majestic and most high, is more tremendous and more tremendous. He the perfect and most high. So if this is the footstool, it covers and encompasses the heavens and the earth, the, the kursi. And the throne, the arsh, is, even, is greater, far greater. And the Lord is more tremendous than everything and greater than everything. وَلَا يَعُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا the part of the ayah with the explanation and guarding them the heavens and the earth does not weary him the sheikh said meaning it is not a difficulty for him and it does not cause Allah the mighty majestic to be incapable to guard the heavens and the earth and whatever is within them from created beings despite their great size and their vastness and along with the fact that he is he the mighty majestic is high above then still he does not miss anything and it is not a difficult it is not a difficulty for him to preserve the heavens and the earth it is not difficult for him to guard whatever is in the heavens and the earth lahu mu'aqqibatun min bayni yadayhi wa min khalfihi yahfazunahu min amri Allah surah al-ra'd the 13th surah ayah 11 with the explanation angels in succession Guard each person in front of him and behind him by the command of Allah. And likewise, the ayah quotes the ayah of Allah, Khairun Hafidan, Wahu Arhamu Rahimin, Surah Yusuf, the 12th Surah, Ayah 64, with the explanation. So Allah is the best guardian and He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. The Shaykh said, So Allah, the mighty and majestic, despite His being high above, He, the exalted and most high, being above everything. 
then he is not wearied. It is not difficult for him to guard the heavens and the earth. And he finishes, the Shaykh finished by quoting the, part, the last part of the ayah, وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ And he is the Most High, the Tremendous One. The Shaykh said, he, وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ And he is Al-Ali, he the Majestic and Most High, the High One, above everything. And he is Al-Azim, the Tremendous One, over everything. Some of the people of knowledge have said, Al-Ulu, Allah's Ulu, Ulu, His Highness and Exaltedness, is of two types. That he himself, Ulu, that, that he himself is high above. He the Majestic and Most High. So he is above. And secondly, Ulu Sifatihi, the exaltedness of his attributes, that they are above everything. And the tremendous one, Al Adim, it means Dhul Adama, Wal Izza, Wal Kibriya, Wal Izza, Wal Jalal. It means the possessor of tremendousness and might and majesty and honor and splendor. So through these meanings contained in this tremendous ayah, it becomes clear that it is the most tremendous ayah in the book of Allah, and Allah is the one who grants success. Walhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. Apologies for making the lesson long. Well, last to be Sheikh. Now, yes, Sheikh. Allah is al Ahlal Ilm. Is al Shuyuk. Allah is ضعيف لا ضعيف 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 ضعف الشيخ الألباني فيما أذكر أي نعم دمر جميع لا غير ثابت Uh, just repeat something because I was uh, I was trying to make the lesson as short as I can manage by speeding up at the end. So, just something I missed, something I read very quickly at the end with regard to Al Azim, the name of Allah the Most High, Al Azim, the Tremendous One. And Sheikh Rothimin mentioned it means the pro the possessor of Al Adama, the possessor of tremendousness and Al Izza and might and Al Kibriya and majesty. And al izza again, honor. The word izza occurs twice in, the, in this printed version. And honor can mean both might and it can mean, can mean honor. And al jalal, splendor or majesty. Alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam.